Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. I'm at the Rock Island Auction Company this week to take a look at some of the fantastic muzzleloaders that they have in-house. And I think this next muzzleloader is the creme de la creme. It's one of the muzzleloaders that has been making waves on the muzzleloading forums with people asking questions, trying to figure out what it is, what its history is, and I think ultimately who's going to take it home and for how much. This is a documented Jacob Dickert rifle. During Dickert's lifetime, the American Long Rifle and the American Backwoods Riflemen, as well as the Pennsylvania Gunmakers, became famous thanks to their reports of American marksmen picking off British officers and other targets of opportunity from long range. Acts the British considered ungentlemanly. Even though in reality they played a relatively minor role in the actual war, the riflemen and their rifles established a long-standing reputation for the individual American marksman that continues to resonate today. This is a fantastic piece of American history. Every muzzleloader that I'm able to look at here at the Rock Island Auction Company gives me chills, but this is definitely one that is just incredible to hold and to see in person. We talk a little bit about Dickert's German heritage, and you really see that with this trigger. The set trigger is a paddle style trigger, a lot like we see in the German Jaegers. And the main trigger itself is just a straight pin trigger. Uh, just real simple, real elegant. Just a fine example of the Germanic influence that we see on the traditional American long rifle here. This over time would change into a more American style trigger curving around, but this is a prime example. And it's just neat to see that direct lineage that we talk about all the time in use and active in a historic piece like this. It's a 50 caliber, a pretty heavy barrel on here. And, you know, holding it up, it's kind of crazy to say that I'm holding a Dickert like this, but uh, I am. Um, you know, it, it holds real nice out there. I think, interesting, I mean, we can talk about contemporary muzzleloaders all day and night, and I love doing that. But when you hold an original like this, it's interesting to see how they did things versus how we do things now. The notch on this rear sight is almost non-existent. I mean, it's just hardly a sixteenth of an inch deep there, really. And the front blade sight is just, I mean, you can see it there, hardly there. Now, this, these have been worn, these have been used, and this is 200 years old, close to 250 years old, really. So there is some wear and tear on this. But a lot of the rifles we see now, we have a really deep notch in this rear sight to help us see things. And you don't have that here. It's an interesting contrast between this and original and a lot of the modern reproductions that we see. Really here nor there, you know, on whether it's not necessarily taking away from the contemporary models. The rear sights on all my muzzleloaders are fairly deep. I like to be able to see a little bit more than I'm able to here. Despite its age, the carving really holds up here to this day. Uh, there's some wear here around the wrist and the crest of the comb. And especially here around the tang and the side plate, we're getting a lot of use here with your hands and things. Up here at the entry pipe for the ramrod, we see a little bit more wear. There's not as much relief carving here as there is an incised line. You get an insight as to how this rifle has been carried over the years. The facets on this ramrod pipe are very well worn. They aren't nearly as sharp and crisp as we see on some of the farther towards the muzzle ramrod pipes. I love the carving here in the cheek rest. Said so it's it's worn. This line going across here, really the side of your cheek rest is well worn. This is very rounded. I assume because of its use and just it's the action that it's seen over the years. This is a well used, well carried example of a Dickert muzzleloader. We see here on the top of the butt plate, there is our screw holding the butt plate to the stock. There's also a screw head used here for the release for our patch box. And interestingly, you know, it still works. You can pop that open and see. Now, another talking point that we see a lot in contemporary muzzleloader buildings is whether or not to stain the inside of our inlets. And the inside here is, has not been treated. Now, I, I suppose it could have been treated years ago, but to me, this looks like raw wood 
from the late 1700s in here. It's not a perfect patch box, and I think that's something really neat to see here. Interestingly enough, there's a lot of wood hogged out here for the release. And we even see that some up here at the crest of the buttstock where we can see kind of a gap in the wood there and where over repeated use, we actually have a little breakthrough on this butt plate. Not taking away from the quality of this piece at all, but I think just representing a, a testament to it being used and carried for several years. The engraving is real simple on our patch box. It's held on with five screws here. And I will say the hinge, the top faces of it here are very flat. Uh, with a lot of modern hinges, we see these being very round as they come around the hinge. This is worked in a way so that those hinges on top you know, are more so domed than they are fully round, which is, which is interesting to see. As far as decoration goes on this rifle, the carving is really what makes it. There's no engraving except for some file work, really on the brass hardware. The side plate is left blank. See some, some pretty rough screws here in this side plate as well, kind of adding to the story of this muzzleloader. On the top face of the barrel, we do have our J Dickert. Although it is very worn, you know, it really lines up with the wear on the bottom where we see the ramrod entry pipe here and the worn carving. And <laughs> I, I'm sure that many of you could have guessed, but that's really kind of where the balance point is on this rifle, maybe a little bit forward, but right on that entry pipe is where this, I assume would have been carried. We see kind of a, our harder edges towards the breech and past the rear sight here. The balance point being right in here where we see the worn engraving and the worn carving on either side. Including our entry pipe here, we have four brass ramrod pipes all decorated with three facets visible and a wedding band on the file work. We have a brass nose cap up on the front end to go along with this incised line carving running from the entry pipe out to the muzzle. I mean, it's just a, just a fantastic piece as far as muzzle loaders go. Really representative of this transitionary period of the American long rifle from the influence of the German gunsmiths to where we start to see American gunsmiths trained by those Germanic builders, taking it into its own realm of tool, of weapon, and of art form here in the States. I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. This is definitely one of the most fantastic muzzleloaders I've had the opportunity to look at, and I hope you've enjoyed looking at it as well. For more information, visit ilovemuzzleloading.com and check out the Rock Island Auction Company on social media. They'll be posting a ton of fantastic pictures of this piece and many more muzzleloaders I'm sure you're going to want to take a look at. Thank you.